Hi, I'm Mary. You know that moment when you get to school and everyone stops talking and looks at you because you're stunningly beautiful? Well, that wasn't me. Not even close. I was the sort of girl that had to remind the teacher that I'm in the class or else they might think I missed it. Before I tell you all about my life-changing experience, subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, and don't forget to activate the notification bell or I'll send my dinosaur to bite you. To make things worse, I had a crush on Philip, the cutest guy in school. I've liked him forever, but I don't think he knew my name. I was sitting with Tom at the cafeteria when I saw Philip sitting with his cool friends. I couldn't help but stare at him with my mouth open. I was drooling like a little puppy. That's when Tom threw a tomato at my face and said with a loud voice, Hello, I'm talking to you. Stop staring at that jerk. I told Tom to leave me alone, but then he stood up and walked towards Philip's table and started talking to him. I was panicking. Suddenly, Philip motioned me over with his arm and I walked over there. Tom and I sat with Philip and his friends. They acted as if we were their friends. We started chatting, it was cool. Until they started discussing who they were gonna take with them to the homecoming party. I asked Philip who he was gonna take with him, but then one of his friends shouted, why won't you take Mary? Everyone started <laughs> laughing loudly. I wanted to die. Acting as chill as I could, I told them that there was no need for Philip to take me because I was going with my boyfriend. Tom looked at me with a puzzled expression, but thank God he stayed silent. You have a boyfriend? Philip asked. Of course, I replied. He, he's, he, he lives in France. I looked at Tom, imploring him to save me. Oh, yes, Tom said after a moment. He's a cool guy. Plays polo. We see him every couple months. He's actually coming next week. When the day of the party came, I was with Tom when Philip asked about my French boyfriend. I told him he'd missed his flight. I kept repeating this lie all night until the unexpected happened. I heard Tom screaming, She is a liar! I looked at him, stunned. Tom grabbed me by the shoulders and said, I'm in love with you, you idiot. Can't you at least pretend I'm your boyfriend rather than just having an imaginary one? He left the party and I rushed after him. I held Tom's hand and... I kissed him, and to my surprise, the kiss was amazing. After that night, we dated throughout my last two years in high school, but I couldn't love him. Actually, I never got over Philip. I couldn't help it, so I decided to reveal my secret to Tom. But to make things worse, Tom knew all about it. When I told him, he actually poured his milkshake over me and ditched me at the cafe. Luckily, graduation day came fast, and I would never have to see him again. Without Tom in my mind, I started to think a lot more about Philip. To tell you a secret, I even started stalking him. He became an obsession. I couldn't stand the idea of not seeing him anymore. So I enrolled at the same university he was going to. Summer was terrible. I couldn't see Philip and I didn't have Tom anymore. I thought it would never end. Finally, the first day of college came and I was so excited to see Philip again that I arrived among the first students. When I saw him, my heart jumped. I acted cool as I said hi. I even acted surprised when he realized we had the same schedules. Go figure, I said. And then we became friends. We studied together, we went to parties together. I didn't mind being in the friend zone. At least Philip was paying attention to me. One night we were at a party, dancing, and I decided to go for it. It had been so many years of waiting. I kissed him and the most amazing thing happened. He kissed me back. I was out of my body. We had a great time that night. And the next one. And the next one. Finally, I was Philip's girlfriend. I even told him I loved him. But then he said he had something to tell me. He already had a girlfriend. What? But he wanted to keep seeing me in secret. What a jerk. I was so mad at him that I ran away crying. But when the moment passed, I decided I was not going to stop. I'd waited too many years to finally be with Philip. I went back to him and said it was okay. I would be with him in spite of his stupid girlfriend. I didn't know who she was, but I was going to have Philip only for me. The day he arrived at a party with his girlfriend, I wanted to die. It was Kirsten, the most popular girl from our school. She went to our university as well. How come I never saw her? They've been dating for almost a year now. I was so blind with excitement, I didn't see it coming. 
And the worst part is she had everything planned. She wanted to see me at the party and then sent a video to everyone of the moment I told Philip I loved him. Everyone started to laugh and I felt as ashamed as I'd been at that horrible spring break party. I dropped out of college. I couldn't bear to see their faces again, the humiliation again. I got a job as a cashier in a small market outside town. I didn't want anybody to see me. After a while, I befriended a regular client whose name was Eric. We started dating and it was okay. I was heartbroken and he comforted me. <laughs> but after a couple of weeks, weird things started to happen. He disappeared for days and he didn't answer my calls. When I asked him what was happening, he said he was sick of me. No, my heart could not handle another embarrassing situation. I was so heartbroken and to make it all worse, I found out that I was pregnant after two weeks. I told Eric and he said he didn't want the baby because he was scared of babies. What? I blocked him and never spoke with him again. I kept my job for as long as I could until I was only weeks away from labor. The day Tiffany was born, I had no job, no money, and nowhere to live. In desperate times, I called my old friend Tom, but he wouldn't listen. My parents had died a long time ago. I had no one. I ended up in a shelter with my baby. And on those long, quiet nights, I had a lot of time to think about my life and my endless mistakes. I remembered Tom. He'd been the only one who ever understood me, and I broke his heart. I realized I'd been chasing men my whole life, making them a priority instead of the most important thing, myself. Luckily, at the shelter, there were quite a few women in a situation similar to mine. We did group therapy together and I made some friends. It was nice for once to know I wasn't completely alone. We all took turns taking care of the babies so the others could go to work or study. Tiffany was now my priority, and I wanted to give her a good life. I got my job as a cashier back and started taking online courses. Things were okay for a while, but one day, Eric appeared and demanded to see his daughter. He smelled really bad and had a violent attitude. He said he was going to take her away unless I gave him money. I was so scared for Tiffany. I didn't want anything bad to happen to her. So I started giving him money every time he showed up, which was more frequent as time passed. One day I told him I didn't have more money, that he was taking all of it and he got violent. He smashed some things in the supermarket and started shouting at me. Luckily, the owner appeared and called the police. They took him away and I was so relieved. It turned out that he was wanted in four states for robbery and the police had been after him for a long time. I told the owner of the store that Eric took all my money and that I had a little girl to take care of. He said that he had a guest house that no one used and that he and his wife had always loved kids but could never have one of their own. He offered for me to stay at the guest house and to take care of Tiffany while I worked and studied. Finally, things were getting in order. I continued to attend my group therapy and help my friends, but I lived next to the store and worked there. The owner and his wife were great people, and I felt like I was finally getting the parents I couldn't while growing up. Tiffany was getting bigger and soon started kindergarten. After a few years, I finally got my degree in economics and got a dream job offer in the city. As I was on my train to my interview, I got sad when I thought I would have to leave my foster parents. But when I arrived, I was shocked to see who the interviewer was. It was Philip. My heart jumped as I saw he was still as handsome as I remembered. He stared at me during the entire interview with that cocky smile, and I thought, what the hell is going on with him? After we finished, he walked towards the door and locked it. Then he turned around, walked back to me, and without any words, kissed me. He said that he missed me and that he was happy to know we were going to work together, that we would have a lot of fun. I couldn't believe what was happening. After a long kiss, I opened my eyes and realized that on the shelf, there was a portrait of him and Kirsten in wedding clothing. I looked back at him and for the first time saw the ring on his finger. Oh my God. He was still the same Philip as always. Forever a charmer, forever a jerk. I sat on the chair in shock. Suddenly my whole life passed in front of my eyes and everything was so clear. I was about to make the worst decision in my life. I would leave the town, the loving parents, and the friends I'd made for a job in the city with Philip? Not a chance. For once in my life, I knew exactly what I had to do. I went back home and found my foster parents crying. 
They loved me and Tiffany, and they didn't want us to leave. I realized this was real. This was the kind of love I deserved and never had. One day, Tiffany came back home, and she was talking all day that she found a new friend that had the same name as me, Mary. The only thought I had was, I wish she didn't have a hard life like I did. A few weeks later, we invited Mary to our house, so her father called to ask for directions to our house. And when I heard his voice, I started shaking. I knew that voice. It was Tom. My old friend, Tom. <laughs> he also recognized my voice, so we chatted for a while, and I felt terribly ashamed. I'd hurt Tom's feelings in the worst way possible, and there he was, naming his daughter after me. He was the best person in the world, and I didn't deserve his love. But then he said he had no regrets. He had accepted his destiny long ago, and he loves his wife so much. He was happy that we met again, and he wanted us to be friends again. Of course, I told him with tears in my eyes. I will never hurt you again. So he came over, and we hugged for what felt like an eternity. And I know what you're thinking, but no, we did not do anything. I'm an adult now, and I stopped doing stupid things. So I kept on working at my parents' market for a while, and then opened my own financial aid office in town. Tiffany and Mary were best friends, and I had a great time with Tom and his loving wife. Our stomachs ached as we laughed, remembering all the wonderful times we spent together at school. I realized that it hadn't been as bad as I remembered. Tom taught me that if you choose to keep the good memories close to your heart, life can feel like a blessing. 